Well, it is good to be back at Iola Baptist uh, Temple and appreciate everyone coming out tonight and a good crowd tonight. It's good to see that and appreciate it. I know some of you drove a long way and really means a lot. Hope to be a blessing. Um, I didn't think I was going to be here when I got done last year. After uh, I did the event last year, I had a good excuse to not do the whole thing because I had to get back home for a funeral the next day. I had to be back early and so I just did 50 miles and I'm going to tell you right now, I couldn't have done 51. I mean, I was so done. I was not prepared. My thighs hurt so bad. I couldn't, I couldn't walk down that hill hardly. I thought I was going to fall. And uh, my legs were brutally sore for days. I was not conditioned. I was not prepared. But I like, you know, and I, and I got done. I was like, yeah, I'm not coming next year. But I got over it. And uh, Pastor Randall, and he waited long enough, you know, after the trauma before inviting me back, and then I was, you know, I, and then I got to thinking about it again later. I was like, man, remember how bad that hurt last year? But I actually like doing, having events like these that I know I'm going to because it kind of motivates me to actually exercise and prepare. And um, I was riding my bike a lot early in the year, uh, but um, over like the last, I did the same thing last year. I rode a lot in the summertime and then started get, getting close to fall, and I just didn't ride at all. And I hadn't rode in like three weeks. And I rode a little bit last week, but let's just say I'm hoping I just do better than 50 miles. 100 miles, I, I don't know. I, I'm not making any promises, but um, we're planning on having our potluck 50 again. I, we don't know for sure. It's going to be uh, the day before the last Sunday of, um, of, of April. And uh, I think we're going to add an extra award that we're going to do. Uh, so uh, I just ran a half marathon last week, which I'm just finally recovered from. Uh, it's the first time I've ever done one of those. But me and my son were talking about marathons and, you know, why the 26.2 miles. And apparently, you know, there was some story about a guy who ran from, I forgot what the areas were he was reading. He looked it up online. He ran a certain distance and then died. And, you know, that, you know, which I almost died after doing half of it. But uh, that's kind of where that the tradition came of doing the 26.2 miles. I thought that's interesting. And then I got to thinking about that story in the Bible about Elijah, where he ran from, I think, Mount Carmel to Jezreel. And we looked that up, and you know, they say that was about 30-some miles. And so I thought about doing a special award for anybody who can just go the same distance as Elijah. Now, we don't know what his time was. Uh, we do know he outran a chariot, though. So... Uh, <laughs> You know, Br Brother Austin, you know, I don't know, you know, if you can uh, beat that or not. He, but he did the fastest, you know, only one that did 50 miles on foot last year. And so we thought about maybe giving a special award to, to everyone who does the same distance as Elijah. And then whoever holds like the record for that time, they got some kind of Elijah award. I haven't decided for sure on that yet. But I'm hoping too, if we do it again this time, last you know, time we start at the church, which works out good. But mentally, we thought it might be better if we just dropped everybody off. 50 miles, you know, that way you could just do one way, you know, and maybe drop off at a few different places. We haven't decided for sure, but either way, it should be fun. But uh, I appreciate everybody that came last year. We had a good time. But 1 Corinthians chapter 9 is where we're at tonight. I want to start reading in verse 24. This is a very fitting passage of Scripture, considering what uh, some of us are going to embark on tomorrow. And it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. And the title of my message is bringing our bodies into subjection. And don't walk out. Nobody wants to hear about this. But, you know, we need this kind of thing. And, and you know, and I'm going to talk about physical stuff, but we're going to go with more of a spiritual application uh, tonight. But, uh, you know, so don't run out. I know we don't want to hear about these things, but we need to. And so the context of this passage is Paul is, he's talking about denying himself certain things or doing certain things that he would normally do, maybe things he would normally want to do. And he was doing that so he, um, others would listen to him give the gospel. That's why to a Jew he became as a Jew. Why? Because he's wanting to win the Jews. And he didn't want 
something that maybe he did, something that he enjoyed that might be an offense to them, to be a hindrance. And, you know, we need to be aware of that kind of thing. If you're talking to somebody from other cultures and stuff, you know, just be aware and, you know, don't be culturally insensitive. And you say, well, that's a dumb, that's a dumb culture. Well, I get that, but I'm not trying to fix their culture right now. I'm trying to give them the gospel. I want to get them saved. So, you know, if I can, uh, if there's something I can do, if, if me avoiding something, if me denying myself something will give me a better opportunity to give somebody the gospel, I should be willing to do that. And there are many things that can hinder someone from listening to us. And if it really is our priority to win somebody to Christ, we're going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. And that was Paul's desire. Paul's goal, he's like, hey, whatever I got to do. He's like, you know, he was talking about, you know, uh, I'm not even looking to get paid by you people. I don't want any of your material things. I'm willing to take care of myself as long as it's because if you pay me, it's going to be a hindrance and I don't want it. Because ultimately, he just wanted to give these people the gospel. He wanted to be a blessing. That was his priority. He didn't mind doing without some things. The Apostle Paul, and the reason he was like that is because you'll notice at the end of the verse, or the end of the chapter, he said, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And that word castaway you know, it's, uh, we get that from the same word. We get the word reprobate. And obviously the apostle, I've heard people use this first to prove you can lose your salvation. You know, Paul was worried about becoming a castaway, you know, and that's the same as a reprobate. And he was afraid that he might lose the salvation. No, what he's talking about here is being cast away from the people he's trying to win. He's trying to, uh, he's trying to give them the gospel and he didn't want because he couldn't keep his body in subjection for the people to cast him away or to reject him. He wanted them to get the gospel. That was his goal. That was his motivation. That's what he cared about. And sadly, as Christians, we often fail at keeping our body under subjection. We fail to do everything we could possibly do to bring people to Christ. I mean, sometimes, you know, we're not, you know, all it takes to stop us from going out and giving somebody the gospel, we're a little hungry. We're a little tired. You know, our foot hurts. You know, some, you know we got, we got some little thing that stops us. And the truth is, if we really wanted it, if we really wanted to see something happen, you know what? We'd overcome it. You know, we would, we'd figure out what we had to do to be able to get the gospel. And so I want to preach about bringing our body to subjection. And I want to illustrate why we often fail to get the job done. And the apostle Paul often used sports metaphors. And that's kind of what he's doing here when he's talking about running in a race. And, and so I want to use kind of a personal one, too, to illustrate, you know, why we often fail in this area and bringing our body into subjection. And, and the failures that I mainly am concerned about are the spiritual ones, all right? But I'm going to use kind of a physical one. So uh, to kind of illustrate this, you know, a few years ago, is, is this the third or fourth potluck? This is the fourth potluck? All right. So I remember when you did the, uh, the one about four years ago, and I remember I came up with excuses really easy not to go. And uh, I don't remember what it was, but, you know, I didn't come. Uh, I was just like, man, 100 miles, that's insane. You know, I, I, I couldn't believe they were going to try it. And then the next year, uh, I think I had some lame excuse too. Uh, but then the third year, he, you know, he invited me to come preach. And it's like, uh, and, and, I, and I, always, I always talked about going to it because I do. I like challenging myself. I like having things like that that I can do. And so I finally decided to do it. Um, but, you know, and I did. I had a good excuse to only do 50 miles because uh, I had a funeral that I had to be back at the next morning, so I was going to need to leave early. But let me just say, uh, after I did that 50 miles, I was not impressed with my performance at all. I was very disappointed with, with myself. You know, I wanted, my goal was to do the 50 miles in five hours, and I barely did it in six hours. And I just... I don't know. I just walked away and I thought that was not an impressive performance. I got in my car, you know, after it took me a lot, you know, just, you know, cramping up and just dying to walk from there to the picnic table to go eat a little bit. And then every time I would stop, it was just a nightmare getting out of the car because my legs were so stiff, you know, and it's not a good idea right after doing a 50 mile bike ride to just get in your car and drive for hours where you can't stretch or anything. And it, it just, you know, I decided then, I was like, man, this was a terrible performance. But next year, next year, I'm going to be ready. 
But you know, I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm not really ready. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not ready, okay? Um, I'm concerned what's gonna happen tomorrow. I am gonna try to do 100 miles, but I'm not real optimistic. And I wanna give you the, I'm just gonna give you the honest truth, all right? It's confession time tonight, okay? It's confession time. Now, I'm gonna give you the honest truth for why I'm pretty sure I'm not ready to do 100 miles on a bike tomorrow. And so uh, turn over to Matthew chapter six, because in reality, we're gonna find out one of the reasons we often fail in our spiritual goals. It's the same thing. The same reason we fail spiritually is the same reason I'm probably not gonna be that impressed with my performance tomorrow. And the, one of the reasons I'm not really prepared for this event is I didn't really make it a priority. You know, you don't just, decide one day, I'm going to go ride 100 miles on a bike. Okay, You, know, you don't just decide, I'm going to go run a marathon. Okay, you, Nobody just makes that decision to do something like that and then does it. You have to train for it. Okay? You have to train for those things. Otherwise, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be bad. And it says in Matthew 6, 21, it says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. We need to understand that you know we are kind of single-minded people, and we need to make sure our mind and our eyes are on good things. Uh, they're on things that are right, because and, and where our treasure is, all right, where our priorities are, that's where our heart's going to be too. And you know, the problem when it comes to a lot of spiritual things, we just, they're not that big of a priority to us. You know, we all understand that we have an event coming up. There's an event coming up called Judgment Day where we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And do you know what's going to determine how that day turns out? It's how we prepare ourselves for it now. I mean, we're training for that right now. We're getting ready for it. You're not just going to one day just decide, you know what? Today, I'm going to do what it takes to have a good day and then it be that day. We don't know when that day is going to be. We don't know when that's going to come. You can't just turn that on. Jesus Christ, when he comes, he's coming quickly. You know, let him that is just be un or unjust be unjust still. Let him that is, I can't remember the passage. You all know it. But I mean, whatever state we want to be in when Jesus Christ returns, we need to start getting there right now. We can't be waiting. We can't be putting these things off. And let me tell you, one of the reasons I'm not really prepared to do 100 miles on a bike tomorrow is because I didn't make it a priority. I have, this event has just not been a focus of my life. And I get it. It's, it's a one day event, all right? But again, you know, people who do impressive things like run marathons and stuff, it's because it's like a focal point of their life. They think about it. Whenever they sit down to eat, they think, I'm going to be running a marathon on this date. You know, whenever they go to that gas station and they're seeing all them good, wonderful, sugary, bubbly drinks in there, they're thinking, you know, that would taste really good, but I'm training for a marathon. They're always thinking about that. They've always got that in their mind, and so they deny themselves certain things, and that's what happens, uh, you know, when we, if, if we're going to succeed in big things, we have to keep it as a focus in our life. And you know what? I wasn't thinking about the potluck 100 every day. There were some days I did, you know, when the spring came and it got nice out, I got my bike out and I started riding again. And I was thinking about this event. And I did a few 20 mile rides and things. And, uh, you know, and uh, you know, I was doing 10, 15. I, I did several rides for a while. I, I never did more than 20 some miles, I don't think this year, but I, every time I would do it, I kept thinking, all right, I'm getting a little better. This is gonna be good. I need to do a 31 pretty soon. And then I go a couple of weeks without it. And, you know, so I thought about it a lot, but I didn't think about it every day. And so here we are today, one day away from judgment day. And I'm not real excited uh, about the prospects. And you know what? Unfortunately, when it, we all know we're going to stand before God one day, but we're just not thinking about it every day. We all understand Jesus Christ is going to return one of these days, but we're not thinking about it every day. And so you know what happens? We end up getting sidetracked with things that end up hindering us spiritually because we're not thinking about it every day. If we really want to finish our course with joy, we have to make sure it's a priority that we're thinking about it every day. We must do that. One of the reasons, 
you know, I, I am not excited about it is I wasn't temperate in all things. We see in verse 25, he says, and every man that striveth for the mastery. All right, if you want to be the master, if you want to be the winner, notice it says every man that strive for is temperate in all things. Okay, now they're doing it for a corruptible crown. All right. I don't even think we're getting a corruptible crown if I win this thing tomorrow. <laughs> but, but either way, okay, you know, it's really more just vain glory. Like, I did it, you know, and, and I promise I'll brag if I get it done, you know, but, uh, you know, that, but at the same time, the people that are doing that, they're temperate in all things. So in other words, you know, they are, they're paying attention to the calorie count on the food that they're eating. They're actually, you know, making sure they set aside time for exercising and preparing for these things. They're temperate in all things. They're not just guzzling soda and energy drinks and all the things. You know, I mean, you know what I, you know what I did on the way here? I, I'm, I, I said it's confession time. You know, I get bored when I'm driving. And one thing that helps me is sugary drinks and sugary stuff. You know, you know what I had on the way here? First, I went and I ate a good breakfast uh, with my wife this morning before I left. But then I uh, stopped at the world's largest truck stop, and uh, I went and I got a I got a Monster Energy drink, and uh, a pack. What's that? Nitros. Yeah, now yeah. and uh, and then and uh, a thing of Sprees. I hadn't ate those in a long time, and I saw them. They look good, and and, and I and I got them, and I ate almost all of them on the way here. And then I got a little hungry right before I got here, and so I got some trail mix. That's healthy, isn't it? All right, yeah, so that's good. So I did that, uh, you know, just do junky stuff like that. You know, you probably shouldn't do that. But even on my way here, I lost focus. <laughs> you know, and uh, I, might, I might pay the consequences tomorrow. You know, there, see, the problem was I didn't really have anything in my daily routine to remind me of what was coming. And folks, we need to have something in our daily routine to remind us of Judgment Day that's coming that we're gonna be standing, we are all gonna stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We are all going to give an account and we need regular reminders of that. Too often we just, we, we let ourselves forget. You know, we just get our Sunday reminder or maybe a Wednesday or Thursday reminder. That's not enough. We need regular reminders of these things. We need to be in our Bible daily. We need to have prayer time. And if you don't schedule these things, they're not just gonna happen. Nobody just magically, spontaneously does a lot of the things they should do, like exercising. I mean, you know, nobody just gets, I mean, maybe maybe you've got those, you know, probably Austin, you know, does, you know, he just gets in the morning, I'm ready to run, you know, he just gets up in the morning and just takes off running, you know, runs a half marathon for a warm-up or something like that, you know, do, you know, runs an Ironman, like, like Chuck Norris, he does like an Ironman event for a warm-up before a workout, things like that, but, uh, you know, most of us don't. We have, we have to plan those things. And we have to drag our, lazy carcasses out of bed, kicking and screaming to do these things. Why? Because we're determined. We're going to make this happen. We're going to accomplish what we need to do. And you know what? You're not just going to naturally do the things spiritually that you need to do. Too many people, they just do spiritual things, you know, when it's convenient, when they feel like it. You can't do that. You, you have to make it a priority. You've got to be thinking about it every day. And I'm telling you, if you don't, one of these days you're going to regret it. Some of us are going to be out there tomorrow. You're going to be out there. You're going to be doing the event. You're going to be having a great time. You're going to finish your course with joy. Some of us are going to be dying and, you know, not, we're not going to make it. We're not going to accomplish what we wanted to accomplish. And I think every, every one of us, when we stand before God, we want to receive rewards. We want to hear him say, well done. We want to be happy on that day. We all want that. That's what every one of us wants. But what are we doing for it? We all want to run a marathon. We all want to do these things. We all want to finish 100 miles tomorrow. But the th fact is, time's come, and we're not ready. Why? Because it wasn't a priority. We weren't thinking about it. And you know, you're not going to make it spiritually if you just occasionally put on Christianity. It says in Ephesians 4.22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. The deceitful lust, that's that, those sprees in the gas station and all, the, all that junk they put there. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know, it's good to talk to people about these things. You know, it's good if you have somebody, hey, you want to do this event with me? Why? You know, why do people exercise with each other? You know, how, how is, 
you know, if, I, if I'm going to go do an exercise with Pastor Randall, how is him lifting weights or running helping me? Well, it actually is because it's motivating me to actually do it. Because you know how easy it is? I mean, there's been times I've literally been on my way to the gym and then just like, eh, I don't feel like it anymore, you know. Maybe if somebody had been waiting for me, you know, it, it would have been different. Those kind of things help. We have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We just forget. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So spiritually, we've, we've got to, we need things reminding us. We need things to help keep us focused. We need things to renew our mind. And again, you know, we've got to have the regular things in our life. You know, you ought to have your daily Bible reading, prayer routine. You should have your weekly, you know, uh, going to church and things like that. But you know what? Even those things can just become a routine and we can find ourselves just going through the motions. So you know what we need to do, even spiritually, we ought to have like big things that we're thinking about looking forward to, you know? It's good to have your regular soul winning time, but that can just become a routine. But you know what? You should also have like the bigger soul winning events that you're thinking about and planning on just to kind of keep you motivated and to renew your mind. Uh, you know, going to church regularly is good, but it's good to have the you know, revival meetings and the conferences and things that you can occasionally go to. Why? Just something to get you out of your routine, something big that's coming up to just renew your mind on these things. Because otherwise, even if you have a good routine, you'll just find yourself just going through the motions and not improving and not getting any better. So you got to change things up every once in a while. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to work. That's the same thing with exercising too. You know, when you're exercising, you don't want to just do the same thing all the time. You know, you need to change things up. You need to try to, you know, work some different muscles, try some different things, and uh, that's going to help you. So it's got to be a daily thing. We see in Psalms 1, 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So, um, so well, I don't meditate on the law day and night. Well, you need to. So what will help you do that? What will get you thinking about that? What will help you get focused? You need to have things in your life. You need to have people in your life. All these things are going to help. You've got to have those reminders. You've got to have those goals. You've got to be, you've got to be thinking about these things. And so um, I'm, I'm concerned about my performance tomorrow. I, I, you know, honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm not even sure I'm in any better shape than I was last year. And I thought my legs were almost better, but I've been feeling my knees a little bit tonight still from that you know, half marathon. I'm, 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 a, I'm wondering a little bit if I'm even going to do better than I did last year. I mean, I'm determined to do better than I did last year, and I hate falling short of goals like that. You know, when I did that half marathon, I was determined to beat two hours. I did it in two hours and four seconds. I, I mean, and if I didn't know, and you know, and it's a good thing I thought, I thought the whole time I was going to beat the two hours because I probably would have started walking before because, I mean, I just, I wasn't prepared for that either, but I, I, you know, I did it anyway. But another reason um, I'm concerned is I just, I didn't make it a priority, but I did not stay focused. So I, I did some preparing. I had some good rides. I thought about it occasionally. You know, but I didn't stay focused. I, I let a lot of things distract me. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he had something in front of him that he was looking to. And for that joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus, while not desiring the cross, he was determined that he was going to go to the cross. You know why? Because he was focused on the Father's will. He was determined that he was going to do what God called him to do. Folks, his body did not want to do what he needed to do. His spirit didn't want to do what it needed to do. He said, my spirit is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. That's how much he dreaded the thought of going and suffering that pain and carrying that weight of sin on the cross. Everything about him 
desired it, but you know what? He was determined in his mind and his heart that he was going to do the will of the Father. And we see in Luke chapter 9, and verse 51, it says, And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face as to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was though he would go to Jerusalem. He was determined. He's like, he was on his way there and he was going to go to the cross. And his eyes were set on that and there wasn't anything that was going to distract him from that because that was God's will. That was what he needed to do. And you know what we need to do? We need to get our focus. We need to get our eyes set on some things and get determined. And let me tell you something. As Americans, we're pretty good at figuring out how to get things that we want to get. You know, it's amazing all the things that we can't, you know, accomplish that are of good spiritual value. But boy, you know, we've all figured out how to get, we figure out how to get those big screen TVs, don't we? We figure out how to get those cars and those toys and those things that we like, all those carnal things. We find ways to get those things. We sometimes get creative. We figure out how we can make a little extra money now, where we can save some money here and there so we can have these things that don't, that don't really matter. We're very... You know, we're very good at figuring those things out when we want it. You know, and I, I did, one thing I learned a long time ago, I, I learned this even before I started pastoring. I learned this as an assistant pastor. I learned that people do what people want to do. People want to be faithful to church, they'll be faithful to church. People want to go sewing, they'll go sewing. But if people don't want to, they're not going to. They're going to find an excuse. I was thinking about this on the way here. You know, did you know the devil is a great provider? The devil will provide you what you need, whatever it is you need, so you don't have to do the will of God, he'll provide it. And so if you're looking for an excuse to get out of church, the devil will provide that excuse for you. You're looking for an excuse not to do right, he'll give you whatever you need. You're looking for an excuse to just you know, get mad at this church. You're looking, if you're looking for a reason to leave this church, I promise the devil will find you something. He'll, he'll give you something. The devil is a great provider for everything we don't need. And I do. I think, I think it's the devil that sometimes helps us get all these carnal things that are just going to make us even more busy and get, get us away from the things of God even more. And we've just got to make sure that we understand that we need to, we've got to make sure we stay focused. We've got to just keep our eyes on the right things. We cannot let the devil sidetrack us. It'll mess everything up if we do it. And so the, um, you know, the Samaritans, here we see that the Samaritans didn't receive him because his face was able to go to Jerusalem. And, you know, they could have been a justifiable distraction, you know, but Jesus was on a mission. Nothing was going to deter him. Hey, you know, these people, you know, they, they need me right now. And, you know, I'm offending them by, you know, the fact I'm going to Jerusalem. But you know what? That was, what, that was God's will. And we all know, so we do, we all know we're going to stand before Christ one day, but it is, it's often in the back of our mind instead of the front of our mind. It's real easy not to think about it, is it? It's, it's just, it's easy to forget. It's easy to forget. Oh man, you know, I got the potluck 100 coming up. I probably should exercise a little bit. I probably should go ride 20, 30, 40 miles before just to prepare my body for something that extreme. I should probably do something like that. But you know what? That's really, you know, not, not going and doing like a 50-mile bike ride to just prepare for an event, that's super easy to not think about. That's real easy. I was like, I don't know. Who, who wants to do that? And, and uh, that's, but you know what? If we're really determined to finish these courses with joy, we're going to do it. We're going to think about it. We're going to make plans. We're going to make time. We're going to find a way to do it. We're going to put those reminders in our life. But we do, we ignore them, we find excuses. We make the mistake of just waiting too long where we don't have time. We saw, and that's the thing, you, you can't start training real hard the week of because you have to give your body some time to heal before you do the big thing. And you know what? I didn't ride my bike at all this week because my legs have been healing all week from the half marathon. That, that was bad to do that at this point too, but I don't know, I just, you know, my wife keeps asking, why are you doing these things? You know, why do you, why do you try to do these things? And I think it's because I, you know, I turned 40 last year, and I, it's like it's midlife crisis. I just I, I'm getting old, and folks, I am getting old. I, I this spring I messed some muscle up in my arm, and it won't get better. It just won't get better. I, I'm not healing like I used to, and I just 
uh, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with some of these things and, you know, and it's, it's bothering me, all right? It's, it's bothering me. And I'm just, I'm determined. I can still do this stuff. I'm still young. I still have my youth. I'm still in my prime. I'm going to get it done. And, you know, but, you know, I'm probably going to go hurt myself again tomorrow just trying to convince myself I'm still young. And, uh, but I don't know. We got any awards for stubbornness, all right? You know, just maybe I'm stubborn enough to get it done. But so I didn't stay focused. The other reason I'm not real determined or real excited about the prospects of tomorrow is I, I wanted junk food and extra sleep more. In Matthew 26, 41, it says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I promise, all, ever since last year, my spirit has wanted to do 100 miles on a bike without quitting and being like I'm dying. You know, my, my spirit has wanted that. My spirit wanted to beat the two hours and a half marathon. You know, my spirit has wanted to accomplish a lot of things, but my flesh is weak. You know, one thing I did do this year, uh, and this is, you know, another example of my body falling apart too, but I determined in March I was going to run 100 miles that month. Not at once, but just throughout the month I was going to run pretty much every day and do 100 miles total. And you know what? I did it. But my feet were so messed up for like weeks after that that I quit running and then all the weight I lost, I put back on. You know, and then I started doing, you know, more weight exercises and things because my feet just wouldn't get better. For weeks and weeks, they wouldn't get better. And I was doing pretty good there, but then that, I messed that muscle up in my arm. And then I got away from that and then I put the weight back on. It's just, you know, you, you, there's just always something. And at the end of the day, you know, I've always, it's, it's not even just the amount of exercise or lack of exercise. Folks, you know, I got a junk food problem, all right? I do. I, I like a lot of junk food. I don't want to eat it. I talk about getting rid of sugar. I talk about getting rid of soda. I talk about these things, but then I see it. I hear somebody pop a can open. Isn't that a beautiful sound? <laughs> yeah, it, that's a beautiful sound when, when you hear that. And... You know, I'll drink bubblies a lot. Anybody, anybody drink bubblies? Those are pretty good. You know, and, you know, it's kind of, have you ever seen people that are trying to get over smoking and stuff where they'll, they'll have those things they put in their hand, it's, you know, they can't even smoke, but it's like they just need to do that. It kind of helps them cope. I've seen that before. I think those are what bubblies are for me. They, it kind of makes me feel like I'm drinking soda a little bit when I'm not. You know, that, that's got me through some times, you know, periods of times when I've uh, gone off soda for a while. But Hebrews 12, 15 says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Esau sold his birthright for just one morsel of meat. Was it worth it, Esau? And you know what? It wasn't worth it. And ladies and gentlemen, was that McDonald's worth it? You know, was that donut worth it? Was that soda worth it? And some of you are thinking, yes. <laughs> but, I mean, it, and they are, and you know, sometimes you wonder a little bit. But you know what? You know why it was worth it? And you know, and, I, and I'll, I'll probably never quit Dr. Pepper. But you know what? At the end of the day, I have to admit, I love Dr. Pepper more than I love the idea of running a marathon doing the potluck 100 without crying like a baby. I love those things more, okay? Now, I, thankfully, I don't think that makes me a bad Christian, but it makes me the, not the greatest athlete in all the world. But you know what? Unfortunately, spiritually, there's a lot of stuff that we just love more than the things of God. A lot of us just love TV more than we love reading our Bible. You know, we love hanging out with the people of the world more than we love hanging out with the people of God. There's a lot of things that we just love those things more. You know, we need to ask God to ch change our heart on these things. We've got to decide, hey, if I want to be a good Christian, if, I re if it really is my desire, if it is my focus and my goal to stand before God and to you know, be happy on that day, you know what? I've got to change some things. I've got to get some stuff out of my life. I've got to add some things into my life. We've got to make that decision. But a lot, oftentimes our flesh is weak. And folks, I you know, Bible talks here about for one morsel of meat, 
he sold his birthright. You know, I wonder, you know, how we're going to feel when we're in heaven, when we, when we see and we realize what we lost, maybe because we watched that TV show. You know, we decide we're going to watch TV instead of going soul winning. You know, because of wh whatever it was that got us out of church, we're going to look like, I gave it up for that. I, I, I got out of the will of God for something. And he, and he, and he uses a, for, a fornicator as an example here. Fornicator, for, for a moment of pleasure, they'll just, they'll ruin their life. They'll ruin their testimony for just, it's not worth it. And you know, and everybody understands temptations that are there, but the things that we often throw away for one, for one moment of pleasure. And you know, we ought, we ought, and we should be ashamed when that kind of thing happens. But you know, people are doing that. They're throwing away so much for just the little smallest physical pleasure. And you know why they do that? Because they're thinking about right now and they're not thinking about the future. They're not thinking about what's to come. They're not thinking about judgment day. And that's why they give into those things. That's why we give into, to give into these temptations. And at the end of the day, we just don't want it enough. We don't want it enough. And I mean, I mean I'm not trying to pick on this event, but you know, I didn't make the potluck 100 a priority for my life. It hasn't been a focal point. I haven't wanted it enough. And so now I'm going to go out there and uh, who knows what's going to happen. Oh, I might do better than I'm thinking. I don't know. You know, but we'll, you know, we'll see. But I, I like the pat this story in Luke 18 in verse 3. Jesus is speaking a parable here and he says there was a widow in that city and she came unto him uh, saying, "Avenge me of mine adversary." And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. She weary me. And the Lord said, Hear ye what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? This woman who goes to an unjust judge because she wanted this so bad. Because she just, I mean, was determined. Her determination, her just constant coming to him, it finally caused this unjust judge to say, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take care of this for her. And Jesus gave this, telling us, this is what you need to do with me. You need to come to me and do it over and over and over again. And you know why we don't get a lot of the prayers answered that we want to get answered? Because we just don't want it very much. It's like our prayer life is we go to God asking him, just going through the motions, and then, then we just act like, well, whatever, if I get it or not. No, why don't we get determined about it? I mean, why don't you go to the Lord, especially if it's, it's for something good, and just beg him for it? He, didn't he tell us to do that? I mean, nag him. Isn't that what he said to do? I mean, that's what I get from this parable. We see he, that's what he wants. He wants us going to him. The problem is, there's so many things, we just don't want it very much. And that's what it comes down to. You know, when, we, when we fail on our diet goals and our exercise goals, at the end of the day, we just don't want it that much. We just don't really care. And you know why a lot of people on Judgment Day are going to stand before God and they're not going to have hardly any rewards? Because they just didn't care. I mean, look how many people that are out there, you know, that you, you, you talk to them every week if you're going out souling that, you know, they claim to be a Christian, but they don't go to church. There's not, they don't do anything. They're not serving God. You know, it's just Christianity. Yeah, I'm a Christian. My parents were Christians. My grandparents were Christian. I mean, yeah, that's what people do. I, I go to church. I enjoy the fellowship. And, you know, there's some fun stuff there. But at the end of the day, they're not a very good Christian. They're not really doing anything for God. They're not laying up any treasures in heaven. You know why? Because they just don't care. They're not thinking about it. It's not a priority. Look how many people that are out there who go to church and you can ask them just something like, do you know for sure if you're going to go to heaven? What, what do you think a person got to do? And they, they, have, they don't know anything about the Bible. How can you go to church for years and not know the Bible? It's real easy if you just don't care. So well, maybe the preacher isn't preaching the Bible. Well, that's probably the case a lot of times. But you know what? A lot of people just don't pay attention. If all you get is what you hear from the pulpit, I mean, I don't think that's going to be enough. I think you're going to need more than that. 
Because the truth is, too, you know, you can sit through church and nobody raise your hand because I, I, I don't want anybody to admit it here, but I think if we were honest, we'd probably all raise our hands. But I mean, how many have ever sat through a service before and your mind was somewhere else? We got one hand all right there. <laughs> how many's mind somewhere else right now? No. And, 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 you know, and you do. Your service will be over and you don't know. <laughs> if I came and asked you after the service what, what the pastor preached about, you wouldn't know. You know why you didn't know? Because you didn't care. You were thinking about something else. You got something else going on in your life. You weren't focused. I, you know, I grew up in a pastor's home. And I remember sometimes, Sunday afternoon, we'd be sitting there, eating dinner around the table, and sometimes my dad, would, he would just ask, so what I preach about today? He would just ask us that. And we'd just, uh, um, <laughs> God, <laughs> you know, we, we, Jesus, you know, we'd say things like that. I remember, and, you know, sometimes I'd be ready. So, sometimes I'd be ready and I'd preach about this. You know, and I'd say a bunch of things. And, you know, and, and typically, you know, once somebody got the answer right, then we'd remember a bunch of stuff. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, the problem is we just, we don't focus on the right things very much. And so because of that, even though we know this event is coming, even though we know Judgment Day is coming, we're not preparing ourselves. And folks, we need to understand there's a lot of big events coming. You know, if you're if if you're if you're young and if you're if you're single, you know what? One of these days, marriage is hopefully coming for you. You know, you should probably prepare yourself for that. You know what? That that's gonna mean denying some things of the flesh. That's gonna mean you know, keeping yourself pure, keeping yourself clean, keeping your mind pure. You better make sure you do that. And that's a difficult thing for a lot of young people, especially in the sick world we live in, especially with the internet stuff. But folks, marriage is coming one of these days, and you want to make sure that you're preparing yourself for that because you know what? It, you know, character doesn't just happen. Well, it's like a lot of guys think, all right, I just turned 18 and 1920. I'm ready to get married. Well, you haven't even got a job yet. You know, why don't you go learn how to work? and do something. They don't know how to do anything. They never accomplished anything. And they think because they hit a certain age, they're just ready to get married. No, you're still a kid. You know, you need, you need to grow up. You need, to be, you need to understand, you know, being a parent, one of these days that's coming up. You know, you should probably think about that. You should probably start learning a few things now. Oh, Pastor Randall's preaching a family series. You know, I'm not even married yet. Well, you're going to get married one of these days. Learn these things now. You know, don't wait. You know, it's it's sad how many people are married, they have kids, and just have no idea what they're doing. And and I'm not I'm not, I'm not picking on these people. This is what you know. This is a result of a culture where the family structure has just been destroyed. You know, most homes today, single parent homes. You know, that are even homes too where. Um, you know, there's only one kid, two kids, whatever. And then a lot of people, you know, they come to churches like this and they hear about, you know, get married and having a bunch of kids. But the problem is they don't know, they're, they've never seen life in a home with a mom and a dad and several kids. They don't know, they don't know what to do. They're, in, in, their, in their world, they've never experienced that before. And let me tell you, it's a real challenge for a lot of these people. And that's one of the reasons too, you know, my wife's program that she's done, you know, I, I realized after I started pastoring that, you know, a lot of ladies, you know, there's just a lot of things they don't understand that they're not ready for, that they've just not been taught because, the, you know, the world's not teaching it. Public schools aren't teaching these things. And if they didn't grow up in, in a good home, there's a lot of things that are going to be a real struggle for them. Our culture, just when, as soon as you have a struggle, just get divorced and try again, and it's supposedly supposed to be better the next time, but it never is. And there's a lot of little things that people aren't prepared for. And, you know, when it comes to things for ladies, you know, I don't think about that stuff, a lot of that stuff, and I wouldn't be good at teaching it. You know, and so she does that, and it's, and it's, it's been a blessing and a help because we were just, we were amazed at just all, all the things that, you know, people aren't familiar. You know, even just some stuff like nursing. You know, a lot of women, they they don't know, they've never done that. You know, or they or they they didn't they don't have a mom that did that that can kind of help them with those things. And so when they hear that that's better, you know, they don't know some of the challenges that come with that. And then you know, and, and then us poor husbands, you know, when they're struggling. With, I remember you know, I remember when my wife had her first son. She um, you know, she struggled nursing at first. He was born early, and 
there was a lot of challenges and struggles there and she was having a hard time and getting upset and I'm standing there like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, nobody asked me what to do if your 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 baby is struggling nursing. All right, I, I can't help you there. Okay, but you know, but she she's been she's been a blessing and a help there. And you know, folks, these are things that are coming for us. These are big deals. Parenting, marriage, you know, Judgment Day, and they're coming. And if we don't prepare ourselves, it's not going to be a pleasant experience. It's not going to be a successful experience. You're not just going to, just like that, have a good marriage and, and be a good parent. You've got to be preparing for these things. And so the inevitable, the inevitable end of my failure to prioritize this event, my failure to stay focused, my love affair with junk food and soda, it will probably result in me possibly not even finishing my course tomorrow. That's very likely. I want to do the hundred but I don't, I don't know, you know, or at best I might finish, but not with joy because I know I could have done better if I had trained a little harder, if I'd have stayed focused, if I'd have kept doing what I was doing in the spring and early summer, I'd be ready to go. I, I, I was on a roll in the spring and early summer and then it just all fell apart. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't even know what happened, but you know, in Acts 2024, it says, but none of these things move me, neither count my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel, the grace of God. And so, you know, I understand the potluck 100, it's not the most important part of any of our lives, okay? If you go out there tomorrow and you don't do 100 miles, I'm not beating you up, all right? None of us are that prepared. We do these things to just challenge us, and then hopefully we do a little better the next year, all right? But at, at the end of the day, we need to understand every one of these reasons that we talked about is why you know, we're not going to finish with joy on these other things that are important, on the spiritual things. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, spiritually speaking. And so we need to make those spiritual things our priority. We've got to make those things a focus, just like those Olympians. They live their life thinking about you know, winning that gold medal for whatever event it is. But you know, the Apostle Paul... There's no doubt that guy, you know what, his, his focus in life, it was souls. There's no doubt about it. I mean, that was his focus, souls. That's all he thought about. That's all he cared about. Everything he did, all his decisions he made, it was centered around souls. And I think that's a great thing. You know, some of us, we've got other things. You know, he wasn't married. He didn't have kids. He was able to do a little better than, uh, so, you know, that might have been some advantage there. But either way, We've got, to de we've got to decide what our goal is, where our focus is going to be, and then we've got to keep it there, and we've got to bring this body into subjection. We've got to tell, we, we've got, because it is, it's weak, it's lazy, it's carnal, it's sinful, and you know, we've got the Holy Spirit in us. You know, we've been quickened spiritually, and we've got to let that spirit take over and tell it who's boss. And whip that thing, whip this thing into shape and start glorifying God and doing some great things with it. And because we have the Holy Spirit, we can. Folks, we, you know, we can do the things spiritually that we need to do. We can do great things for God. We can spiritually finish this course with God. Some of our bodies are messed up to a point, or we may be too old. We're never, there's some things we're just never going to do. Okay. I'm never going to learn how to do a backflip. I've always wanted to be able to do a backflip. I'm, I'm pretty sure it will never happen. Okay. I can do a front flip on a trampoline, but I, I'll probably never do it. I'll never do a backflip. But you know what? Uh, I, I'm not guaranteed any great things with this physical body, but spiritually, spiritually, we can do whatever God wants us to do. And so I hope you'll get determined, get focused. So let's pray to your Lord. I hope this message was a help and encouragement and some motivation. And Lord, I pray you'll help us to just renew our hearts when it comes to the spiritual things and help us to make these things a priority. I pray if this message did anything, it will get every single person in here thinking just a little bit more about the fact they're going to stand before you one of these days. One of these days, Lord, we are going to bow the knee before you while you are sitting on a throne. And Lord, that is going to be uh, such a, a great and terrible day. But yet, dear God, I pray you'll help us to uh, not have it in the back of our mind, but the front of our mind, and we'll 
uh, will make all our decisions thinking about the fact that that day is coming, and I pray you'll help us to finish our course on earth with joy. In your name we pray. Amen.